Finance Minister replies to padding allegation regards it as senseless as 1.7 trillion naira is inserted into MDA's budgets and Nigeria is operating an illegitimate constitution, says former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Olisa Agbakoba. This is Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anakom. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, on Tuesday said allegations of budget padding are products and allocations in the 2023 appropriation bill made no sense. She stated that uh, she said this during her pro presentation before the House of Representatives Committee on Appropriations. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Farouk, had while appearing before the Senate Committee on Special Duties for Budget Defence, blamed the Finance Ministry for adding 206 billion naira to the Ministry's budget. Farouk had claimed that the Ministry requested some projects for the North East Development Commission and the National Social Safety Net project in the 2022 budget, which were not released, but was surprised to see an inflated amount in the 2023 budget of the Ministry. Consequently, the House invited the Finance Minister to respond to six queries concerning budgets of various ministries, departments and agencies. Joining us to discuss this is Emmanuel Lumoran, he's a legal practitioner, and Gide Olugu, who is also a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Great. I'll start with you, um, Barista Olugu. So it's a, it's a question of who's telling us the truth or who's right and who's wrong. And this is not the first time in Nigeria where we've had issues of budget padding, allegations of insertion of bloated amounts of budgets uh, or things that are put into the budget. Um, but today, the finance minister has come out to say that this does not necessarily make sense, being that they known, knowingly put this into the um, budgets um, of the humanitarian ministry um, and, and she's saying that there's no cost for a lamb but do you looking at all of the things that have played out over last week into this week where do you stand on this particular matter you know it's quite interesting because a newspaper actually reported that the national investors commission ministry of defense and ministry of humanitarian affairs and disaster management and social development accused the finance ministry of inserting the projects in their budgets and if you look at the processes of uh, uh, making budgets you, you realize that, should, that there should have been enough time to verify what you are inserting so it may be like trying to cut corners here but what happens is that there will be a lot of deniers, as usual. But these are government agencies, ministries, and departments accusing each other and denying allegations. And for some of us, it's not something new in the country when you talk about budget padding. And I must appreciate the concerns of National Assembly members, saying that at a time like this in the country, when we have very challenging economic situation, those who are expected by Section 4 of the Nigeria Constitution as amended to make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria are discovering that there are some of the ministries that are expected to understand our plight are trying to cut corners. And then um, it, it's really disturbing. And if you look at Section 15, subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution as amended, it says that the state shall abolish corrupt practice and abuse of office. So it's quite worrisome. And while the country is crying about low revenue, while the country is crying about very high uh, indebtedness, different kinds of hardship, that some are trying to smuggle in some strange elements into our budget. And don't forget that that budget itself is arriving on a K-leg. It's a deficit budget. So when you now overload it, it's, 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 it's disturbing. But let me 
me just anchor my part of this discussion on the fact that this may also fizzle away on the platform of deniers. All of deniers will come. But we are calling on the National Assembly to be very vigilant, and that is one of the uh, responsibilities of the National Assembly to ensure that these budgetary uh, provisions are well defended and they reflect transparency. And of course, they reflect the state of the nation currently as we have it. Samora, let me come to you. It sounds more like um, the humanitarian affairs minister um, was totally unaware about this insertion because kept insisting that she knew nothing about how this money, this figure was inserted into their budget. And just to borrow from what Paris Logan just said now, um, there, are, there, there was enough time between the time that these budgets were put together and the time that they had to do the presentation. That should there not be some form of, you know, um, liaison between these ministries, departments and agencies before the presentation were to happen, being that the finance ministry um, somewhat was in charge of that, drawing up all of that budget. And if something had to be inserted into another ministry's budget, how come one person doesn't know? Do you smell a rat here? And, and this explanation that the finance minister has given us, should that suffice? Um, th thank you. you. You see, we have seen this before. Uh, from 1999, we have seen these issues of budget padding. And unfortunately, it has come to stay with us, like everything bad in Nigeria. The fact that the, mini the Minister for uh, 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 Finance is now coming to say it, does, it doesn't matter. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. The funds that they are, that they are throwing all, of, all over the place, like my colleague said, we are in a dire strait in Nigeria. These funds do not belong to them. They belong to the, to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Every one of us, these are taxpayers' money. And what have they done now? They are trying to shift the, uh, shift the ball to uh, push it here and there, and at the end of the day, everybody will forget about it. it has, like I said earlier, it's been happening. And it's also unfortunate that our security agencies, who, who, who pursue young, young people, the young people in this country, who do all sorts to the poor people, do not look at these people at all. ICPC has said they have uh, uh, stopped the about two, uh, 200 and uh, I mean, 400 or something, uh, 406 billion that were inserted in this budget and that it won't go. What have you done to the people who, are, who, who did this? And we've not seen one minister tried and convicted for this uh, party. The only person that was tried, the trial took over 20 years, was the former Senate president. And at the end of the day, it was said that he was removed because they didn't want he, 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 was, he was arrested and tried because they, they wanted him out of office. Now, why have we not been able to have one conviction for uh, getting to th almost 30 years now? We've not been able to have one conviction, and these things are happening. Ministers leave, leave office and become billionaires. People, some people who, before 1999, could not buy a ticket to fly from Lagos or from Kaduna to... Uh, uh, could fly from Kaduna to Lagos. These are the same people that have become billionaires who are buying uh, forms of political parties for 100 million. This is the fact. The country is bleeding. And until we do something about it, we are, we are destroying our country. When you, when, when you that, say, Barrister, when you say until we do something about it, who's we and what exactly do you mean by that? We are the security agencies. The ESCC, the ICPC, the Nigerian police, they are there. They are doing nothing. And unfortunately, too, each of these group of people, these big men, in, in quotes, have security people around them. They, are, they have DGSS, they have uh, police, they have uh, all sorts around them, guarding them, and nobody is passing information. Interesting. Let me let me move back to Baisa Logo. Let's talk about 
the projects that were made reference to by the Minister of um, Disaster, Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management and Social Development. Now, Sadia Farouk had said that the Ministry of Finance requested some projects for the Northeast Development Commission and National Social Safety Net project in 2022's budget, which were not released. On the line, uh, it was not released. But then he was surprised to see an inflated amount of that money in the 2023 budget. So my question is, if these projects that were requested to be inserted um, were not questionable in any way, why were they, were they not made plain? And why was there not prior information before this was put in? Again, why inflate the amount without doing due process? I'm asking this because, again, after maybe a few days, this would, this would not no longer be making our headlines and it would obviously be gone with the wind. Why is there never a follow through of this issue? And because you started this conversation by Star Logo by saying that, oh, this is not new. So because it's not new and it's raising its ugly head again, should we let it go as we other, always let the other things go? It's not a matter of letting it go, but who we attend to them. Like uh, my brilliant colleague just mentioned now, we have law enforcement agencies. Have you forgotten the, the probe of NDDC? Off your mic. Yeah, so we just have high people in, you know, top people in high places who want to plunge this nation into the abysses of, of crisis. Let me run us through uh, slightly the budgeting processes that we have. In preparing federal government budgets, all agencies using the guidelines and budget ceiling prepare and submit their estimates to the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. After reviewing it, the ministry will aggregate the budget in the form of consolidated estimates of revenue and essential, and then send it to the president for approval. And the president, on receiving the proposal as approved by the Budget and Planning Ministry, will present the draft estimate to the Federal Executive Council for further consideration and approval, after which the draft estimate is sent to the National Assembly, where it is now, in form of an appropriation bill. And so at what point will people be smuggling things in? If there is not a cartel of, of, of you know, I mean, I, I want to be very civil in my expression, and I don't want to, the state of the nation to reflect what I have to say. Otherwise, I was going to wonder that at what point in time, when we have this due process, will some people now, now be denied? They don't know when somebody was, something was more good in there. That means there must be some fraudulent personalities in the ecosystem of our budgeting process that are trying to take disadvantage of the country. I don't want to say take advantage because currently it appears as if this nation is bleeding. It's in an emergency state and some in that emergency state still want to take disadvantage. It's so sad. How do we bring them to justice? That's the big question. We've had several cases. Right now we have not recovered from the shock of oil theft. Nigeria losing trillions of dollars to oil theft. Have we not read recently that NNPC has remitted zero into the Federation account? So where do we go from here? And the people you look, what is the meaning of budget? Budget is like the health line of a nation. And like I said, disturbingly, the so-called budget, 2023 budget of about 20 point something uh, trillion naira is coming as a deficit budget. We plan to earn a revenue of nine trillion and to borrow about eight trillion naira. We are talking about subsidy. There is fuel scarcity now. We have different kinds of crises, and it's so sad. So we may be dealing with institutional crime here, but who brings them to justice? That's the big question, because in the ecosystem of the budgeting process, I have mentioned the, the, the higher might, the federal executive council, the presidency, you know, the national, all of them. So. We are looking up to the National Assembly now, where we have 109 senators and 360 House of Rest members, and they are representing their constituents all across the country. So we can see that it's a unique feature of democracy to look critically into this thing. So if the, some ministries are denying, for instance, that they don't know how it got there, then let's involve the law enforcement agents to help us investigate. But don't forget also that recently a vessel was, was arrested Ferrying stolen oil out of Nigeria and set ablaze on the high sea. So, and imagine 
that the Ministry of Defense found about 10.8 billion naira. Humanitarian Affairs Ministry, about 206 billion naira. About 195 billion naira for multi, multi, uh, multilateral projects in power ministry. So, and Nigerians are the one paying for all this. Let's even assume we have the revenue. And so, if this gets through quietly, that means trillions of naira will be stolen by some and taken away from the coffers of the nation to, to find their embers of, of I don't know, I don't, it, 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 it's really sad. So, we look up to the National Assembly that discovered this to press down to justice. Has the National Did Assembly, so has the like National Assembly ever the come through? Barista Logo, as much as you, you keep harping, and I'm not in any way, you know, being prejudicial in any, but I'm just wondering, you keep saying that we look up to the National Assembly. Has the National Assembly ever come through in terms of things like this, whether it be budget padding or not? Again, you made reference to uh, Professor Ponde. I, I would love to ask, where is Professor Ponde? Where is that issue right now? It's a dead end, isn't it? And you also pointed the fact that the vessel was, you know, set ablaze. And the, the um, army chief said that there was nothing to investigate. So again, if we are at the mercy of this so-called National Assembly, who's supposed to re represent us and nothing is being done, um, what is the fate of the average Nigerian then? The fate of the average Nigerian is that if the Nigerian citizen becomes powerless to fight for himself, or herself, God Almighty will fight. And let me say this clearly. Really? We have to wait for God to fight our nation, battles? Really? Why do we have government? A season of accountability for them. What God plans for Nigeria is prosperity. And for that purpose, he has blessed us extremely. And for those who believe that they should corner their prosperity for their selfish benefit, definitely they will account, if not to man, to God. Because it's, mm. it's, it's just disturbing. I, you know, it's, it's really disturbing. How do you even explain the oil theft? How do you explain it? Different kinds of issues. Right now, we are talking about scarcity of oil. Why should Nigeria not have functional refineries? Several questions. Look at the foreign exchange uh, sector. Do you know now that right now, if you are traveling abroad and you are, you are fortunate enough at home to get what is called the card they give you for your BTA? Some travelers have come back to say that you cannot even transact with those cards. So why do we have a nation that cannot boast of trust capital? Mm. Why is everything like this? And now ministries are arguing who is smuggling uh, some budgetary, extra budgetary uh, provisions into the proposed budget. So we just wish that um, somewhere along the line, some of them become conscientious and know that the commonwealth of this nation should be the common good of the people. Already, we are owing about 42.5 trillion naira as total debt. So who is going to pay that? Are we mortgaging the future of this country or securing the future of this country? So those are our concerns. And that is why, at this point in time, given the benefit of doubt, and we may expect that the National Assembly should press this down to a reasonable conclusion. I don't forget, many of those in the present Ninth Assembly may not return from what happened recently during the primaries. Even the Senate president himself, from what we are getting back from the uh, court, may not be returning to the National Assembly. So maybe that we, you know, really touch them where it counts okay. for them to use this as a scapegoat case. Let Except me the high and mighty also intervene and say they should off their mind. But, but Warren, um I mean, I can read this long list of budget padding cases that has, you know, have been recorded over the year, uh, the years. But I, I want to not go in that direction. Now, if you were listening to the conversation, Barista Logo here is saying, well, if, if the National Assembly is not going to fight for us, then God will fight for us. That's, let me take you to Singapore, to China, the most of Southeast Asia. Um, they, they believe in a God, I'm sure. But then they have laws that work, a system that's programmed to work, not necessarily just for the people, but against corruption. That, that notwithstanding, there is corruption everywhere in the world. But then there is a system that has been watertight in a way that if you steal, you know the consequences. So, um, but in Nigeria, we always rely on God to fight our battles. Why do we even have leaders if we have to go to God to really fight our battles? Again... Um, we're facing a downturn of sorts, um, even though a lot of people would say that, oh, well, the whole world is trying to recover from COVID. Um, it's been a year. 
like you said, we're, we're struggling with petroleum, a country that has crude oil, but then we have not been able to record any amount in the federal coffers from the NNPC that has been getting a facelift almost every year. I mean, the list is endless. Our children were at home for more than eight months because the federal government was unable to come to an agreement with ASU. I can go on and on and on. How long are we going to wait for God to fight our battles when we have rights, responsibilities, and, of course, we have our votes? Yes. Uh, well, you see, the, like my little friend said earlier, we, we, one thing we must do, we must get away from this thing of oh, flying our hands up air. Now, there's nothing we can do. What the first thing we can do now, given our situation in this, Mr. Moran, are you there? Can you hear me? Is this these issues one, two is this? We must call out as much as possible the security agencies because we cannot continue in this regard. These people are like, unfortunately, like rats. You know, if you put a rat in a in a in a sack of 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 grain, it will eat and and stew there and eat until it finds itself into a point where it is dead and it will not care. These people are ready to steal this country blind. Every most of them have invested their monies in stealing, and unfortunately, the civil servants have, are, are in cahoot with them. The security agencies are in cahoot with them. Look around you. How many retired IGs in Nigeria are not billionaires? How many commissioners of police in this country are not billionaires? Are not millionaires, multi millionaires? How many generals in this country are not multi millionaires? Where how many permanent secretaries in this country are not multi billionaires? Where do they get these monies from? We should ask questions. Does it end at asking questions? Because you see. And this, we see that this, this is an election people... cycle year. In fact, the campaigns are in full swing right now. And we are hearing all kinds of very outlandish promises. But then the how-to. Um, we see that we have the ICPC, we have the EFCC, we have the DSS. These are more like guard dogs that are released on you know, people for something as ridiculous as saying, oh, somebody looks fat in a picture. But when or, it comes or, or down tweet, to the serious somebody things... Tweet, and somebody's arrested. Yes, and so, people are, 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 are moving billions. People are coming on to the national <coughs> state to tell the national that um, snakes swallowed money, that um, termites ate receipts. How do you how do you explain this? In, in Nigeria, so that of... So we, we, why are we not punishing offenders? This is my question. I remember there was a recently a presidential pardon for two people who were elected into office who also stole from the coffers of the country or the state. But these people have been granted presidential pardon. Uh, what kind of strict, strict, stricter sanctions need to be put in place? You guys are the lawyers here. I mean, we have a law. How much of this law has been tested and how many people have we seen put behind bars? We keep seeing, oh, this person is being arrayed for one, one corruption issue or the other. But how many of these people have gone to jail in earnest so that we can actually say that corruption is being kicked out of this country or brought down to its barest minimum? Or are we going to continue like this? Well, we, we, we are finding ourselves that we are going to continue like this until we step out and say, like you said, this election circle, until we step out say this is enough okay i think that this is enough if we don't do that then we we are we are shooting ourselves with the food we may find out that we don't have a country anymore i'm, I'm going to come back to you by star logo I, I want to just go through some of the budget padding stories that we've had Please over the years call these people sorry can you hear me yeah, you, you were off for a bit, but let me just quickly go back to Barista Logan. Now, in 2018, um, the finance minister and the coordinating minister of the economy, Ngozi Konjewala, leaked the 17 billion naira budget padding, uh, you know, that became a scandal. Um, she leaked a 17 billion naira budget padding by the National Assembly. Um, it was in 2015, I beg your pardon. Now, 
also, let's fast forward to another year. In 2018, um, the National Assembly smuggled 6,403 projects worth 578 billion naira into the 2018 budget. Now, President Buhari was the one who made this known. We move again to another one, a 424 billion naira budget padding. Uh, Farouk Ahmed uh, was bickering with minister, ministries, departments, and agencies. The ICPC, at some point um, in 2021, uncovered 400 billion naira budget padding, 50 billion naira ghost worker salaries, also in that. Um, also, in, I think in January of 2022, there was a budget padding that hit 3 trillion naira. And this is something that has happened over six years. So I ask you again, Barista Logo, what should we be prioritizing as we go into this season of elections? Because it's not enough for us to jaw jaw about it. But what actions need to happen for certain persons uh, to be brought to book? You know, it's important that all those who have their PVCs to come out and vote. And that is hoping that the votes will count. That's another thing, because when you find a society that is in the claws of the corrupt, the corruption may run through the whole system. And that is why, again, it remains shocking that the Accountant General of the Federation entrusted with the funds of the nation was found to have stolen over 80 billion naira when the world population stands at 8 billion today. You know, even though this is <clears throat> at... Barcelona, are you still there? That is, that vulnerable. We should be concerned. So let people go out and vote. But beyond this voting, how can we have a system of accountability? You see, can what we are going through here be read about in China, in Japan, in Iceland, in Rwanda, even in Africa here. I mean, we are reading news about what the former president of South Africa is going through now in the hands of the laws. So it, it appears right now by perception that Nigeria has become so exposed to crime that few people are even afraid of breaching the laws of the land. And when you have laws that you are not implementing, you are as bad as you don't have laws. So for us, in the country, it's just because we have come to condone this massive criminality against the nation. You know, different kinds of stories that are unbelievable. You know, it was the... I think they were having a connection problem there. With so, so what are they there for? Is it to plunder the nation? See? So we... And this must be explained. Recently, contaminated fuel got imported into this country. Till date, we cannot tell who was behind it, and many people suffered for it. Right yeah. now, we are suffering from fuel scarcity, and there appears to be no explanation, even when the president of the country and the commander in chief himself is the substantive minister of petroleum resources. Okay. So what exactly is going on? Well, uh, what exactly is going on? I think that's the big question that every one of us has to answer, and we, we one way or the other, have to put an end to it. But we have to go. Gentlemen, I want to say thank you. Emmanuel Morin, Jido Logun, a both legal practitioners, thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Thank you. God bless Nigeria. All right. Thank you. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be looking at uh, the issue of the legality of Nigeria's constitution because a former NBA chairman... Um, Mr. Wakuba has said that these documents that we're using are illegal. We'll be right back.